This is the Make Sierra Leone Famous podcast. If you're looking to explore Sierra Leone and understand its culture and its people, you've come to the right place. On every show, you'll meet Sierra Leonean creatives and entrepreneurs overcoming challenges and beating the odds. They are artists, filmmakers, musicians, chefs, writers, storytellers, and designers leading Sierra Leone's orange economy, both at home and from the diaspora. I'm your host, Vicky Rameau, journalist, entrepreneur, and community builder on a mission to expand Sierra Leone's presence on the web. Hashtag Make Sierra Leone Famous. The other voice you'll hear on Make Sierra Leone Famous is sound engineer and producer Frank Vin Bob McEwen at VRNC Marketing Company in Freetown, where this show is mixed and mastered. Now, make the show begin. Now we have connections and opportunities, like you said to send our movies to festival. Like a um, few months ago, some of our films, and even though it's not my, some of my colleagues' films, we are sent to Zafa. Also some were sent to some film festival, and they were among the 10 top films that were nominated. So for platform-wise, we were getting there. And also for marketing-wise, even though we have problems with the marketing, but I think this piracy thing is affecting us. So people, the union are, is coming together. They are on their tools to put things in place. So market-wise and wise, I think they are working on it. But for international platform, we have lots of connections. And the only thing now is that we need to do our homework. We need to do our assignments and do proper quality of production. Then the two previous movies that I did, the recent one, the Watibera, that's a designer and also the lens. We also make an arrangement. They sent them to Netflix mm-hmm. and they on the scrutiny. By God's grace, we hope for the best. So welcome to another edition of the Make Sierra Leone Famous podcast. With me on the show today is the man you want on set behind the camera. More than anything else, um, if you're making a film or a reality TV show in Sierra Leone, he is a director, a film writer. He's written six movies, including Deep in the Game, Saved by Grace, Together by Law, Profit Point, and most recently, Watibera, which is the kind of bio documentary on the life and work of um, former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Haja Zainab Hawabangura, who's currently with the United Nations in um, Nairobi. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest for today is law students by day, filmmaker by night, Mohamed Lansana, a.k.a. Spata Kamara. And we're going to be talking about the film scene in Sierra Leone. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Vicky. Uh, so excited. I did smile, so, smile, smile. So now, boku boku. I did smile. Limba so. man, limba man, they always they smile. <laughs> I know that's right. Wali Bena. Wali, you can I talk all? Exactly. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I know. Okay, no, we're not <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm so um, excited okay, so to be part of this platform. Me too, because let me tell you something. Um, uh, film is one of those things where when we think of, um, when we look across West Africa and even across the continent, there's so much talk and conversation around film and film output um, today more than ever, right? Um, and also there's so many opportunities for streaming with Iroko, Netflix, Amazon, um, that have really changed the center of film, in a center of film distribution, meaning that now we're in a position where anyone really um, making a film, if it's a great story, great production value, um, you can get a worldwide audience. And so with that in mind, I wanted to talk to you to understand where the Sierra Leonean film industry is right now, what you're working on, um, what we should be looking out for, and whether or not you guys have your sights on this global film market. So first and foremost, how did you discover um, filmmaking? How did you get into filmmaking? Okay, started way back in school at Prince of Wales when we normally have uh, 
prize giving ceremony and during the prize giving ceremony we have different departments and i was in the drama department i started acting so one particular year i acted a particular character and people loved it and they started calling me by that character and since then people started liking me so you can be a good actor a good actor a good actor even girls from annual because during prize giving we invite people from different schools and i started become someone that people like in acting so one of my friends saw uh, uh, an audition flyer and asked me that you should go for this audition. And I went for the audition. And by then I was so young and tiny and I was so naive. So I went for the audition. I went for three auditions and they, were not, they did not call me. So fortunately I went for one organized by Universal Image Augusto Somojo Thomas. So I went for the audition. Unfortunately, I didn't have a role for that particular project. So I decided to be part of the production team. So being part of the production team, I was technically the, the, the production assistant, locally called the air and boy, the, the one that mm -hmm. people will be sending, go and buy this, go and buy this, all this and all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started yeah, yeah. learning about film, started understanding what is called, what is action, how it is really, so that's how I came into movie and started writing also up to this time. I write and also direct. So basically it's honestly, I mean, people people look down on the production assistant role, but like I think that if you really want to understand the filmmaking, um, besides like, you know, when you go to school and you learn like cinematography, like the only way to learn how to make a film is to be on the set of making a film. And when you're a production assistant, you get yes. to work so on so many that roles tells me and support, support so many parts of the production that you're like, oh, okay, so Nadisi take, Nadisi take, Nadisi take. So, I mean, I have somebody yeah. now who's on my team who leads production and he started out as a production assistant on my TV show. And he's the person now who's like, you know, leading our production. So, no, I totally think that that's that's the right approach. OK, so you wanted to get into film. Basically, you're not able to break cam because you know, being getting body, you body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you body. Yes. You body. Don't be I was so you young. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, that, that time I was like 17 years, 17. So I was so okay. young. You're like I mean, okay, you have that experience on your first film, but how did you kind of transition? What was the catalyst that made you feel like, okay, you know, this is something that I could do, right? It's one thing to go in and, and, and be a PA on a set, but what clicked for you during that experience or something else that made you feel like, okay, this isn't just a one-off thing. Like there's something that I asked you for me. Okay. So um, as I said, from the Prince of Wales, we, are, we learned how to speak English and grammar. Mm -hmm. So anytime I'm on the set, when probably one of the actors want to say something that is wrong English-wise to the grammar. So what we do is that I came in and say, okay, can we do it like director? Can you check this English? Can we do it like this? Can we do it like that? So I started making myself relevant as a production assistant. So by then, whenever a director is shooting a scene call, say, Sparta, what do you think about it? Is this line okay? Is this line okay? Then I started giving me a um, chance say, okay, write this scene. For example, for um, addendum scenes, he called me say, okay, write a dialogue for this. So I started writing. So since then, I continue writing. And at the end of the day, he gave me a whole project. Say, this is the story. Write this. I believe in you. And you're going to prove it. So that's how I started writing. And when I wrote the movie, and my first movie was deep in the game. So I wrote go deep in the game. The Make Sierra Leone Famous podcast is made possible by Dots Blue. With its certified air freight service, Dot Blue is the easy and affordable way to ship to Salon from the US or from the US to Salon. No need to wait till someone is going home. Dot Blue will deliver your next package to Sierra Leone in 15 days or less. To ship with Dot Blue, contact us on WhatsApp on plus one two four zero four six zero two zero five six or plus two three two eight eight three one three 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 zero in sierra leone you can find our office at 17a wallace johnson street in freetown fly and go with dots blue we go deliver for you d-o-t-b-l-e-u dot com that 
That is really fascinating. Like basically now because you sabi talk English show, <laughs> that is no, thick. not basically not not basically talk English, like understand grammar, like when they want uh-huh. to talk something that is not correct, like speaking in English. And also people, people like... by by then people also expect me to I was a school prefect people, so I mostly go oh. to sets like with my school prefect badge and all this. So they took they took Australian people as these these are people. That you get know, sense now. Possibly we get sense. We should listen to him. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, tell me what was the um, plot of your first movie that you wrote? Okay, deep in the game, based on the movie that I've been watching, I watch lots of Mexican movies with this mm-hmm. drop. So deep in the game uh, entitled it's based on a young lady that dropped out of school and want mm-hmm. to survive and. The only way she survives is when someone help her, helped her and bring her on board to start doing drugs. And she became so deep in the game as in a drug lord. And at the end of the day, lots of vices, lots of counterparts came in and attacked. So basically, it involves actions, drama, and suspense. Wow. And you, who, who starred in this movie? Did you make it? Yes. She's okay. called Aisha okay. Salima Tukago. And one of the highest wow. selling movies since. Wow. How did you do distribution? What's the um, the route to distribution for a film like that in Sierra Leone? Well, basically, I worked with my boss, that is Augusto Samojo Thomas. And by mm-hmm. then, like I said, I was young and didn't have too much experience. I just have the experience as this the film and the directing side. And when it mm-hmm. comes to marketing, we had uh, an Nigeria marketer who helped us, that is that's it, Tony is dead now. He helped us and okay. he also make sure that distributes every corner of this country and from the provinces, free town. And also, funnily, deep in the game also sold in Guinea. And we went to okay. Guinea, people called us from Guinea. By then, my number was in the movie. And I received lots of calls from Guinea. People say, hey, boy, they were speaking French. I don't understand French. So <laughs> one day I was fortunate to have one of my friends <laughs> that talks French. And uh-huh. translated for me okay people are watching with the love with the calling Aisha Aisha so they change the name they use the lead character as Aisha they call the film okay Aisha. and for to they make it culturally relevant into, for into, into Madingo so they did a they did a they dub translated. they did a Madingo dub of the yes. film and called yeah, Aisha they, they, yes they, they, they dub it as Guinean to French and to Madingo so I think that that's so fascinating that um, your first movie gets made into this life. <laughs> I think that's really cool. Even though I uh, should say, because now Payets uh, and Payets are, you know, make, you know, make money from that. But at nah. least, I guess, on a positive side, um, the work got like uh, the kind of exposure, right? Tell me how the industry has changed from that first movie you made to now, what are some of like the big standout changes that have happened in the industry over this period of time? What year was the first movie? This is 2015, 16. Okay, not that long ago, actually. Not that long ago, about six, seven years. Okay, how okay. has the industry changed in the past five to seven years? Okay, production-wise, we've changed and we've grown massively. Starting with the cameras we were using, by then we were using low types of camera like the canon six something and all the rest but now we go to using canon mac 2 mac 3 2018 mac 3 2010 12 we use canon mac 3 and 4 and presently we're using black magic and also we're using red mm-hmm. for the recent movie i shot for a designer of our bangura we use red dragon and production wise the camera wise the sound okay. equipment, we, we've grown to that point that we're using standard cameras mm-hmm. because we're looking at for us to hit the international market. This is one of the, the, the criteria that people are watching for and yeah. the sound, the picture. And for us to get good picture, we need to go in mm-hmm. for the better camera. So now, of even course. myself, I'm not using any camera below Black Magic from Black Magic and above. 
Okay, cool. So the big thing is like the actual tools that you're using, you've upgraded your tools. Um, what about yes. the, the routes to market in terms of film distribution? Has that changed? Yes, somehow it has changed somehow. Now we have connections and opportunities, like you said, to send our movies to festival. Like um, a few months ago, some of our films, and even though it's not my, some of my colleagues' films, we are sent to Zafa. Also, some were sent to some film festival, and they we are among the 10 top films that were nominated. So for platform-wise, we were getting there. And also for marketing-wise, even though we have problems with the marketing, but I think this piracy thing is affecting us. So people, the union are, is coming together, they are on their tools to put things in place. So market-wise and wise, I think they are working on it. But for international platform, we have lots of connections. And the only thing now is that we need to do our homework. We need to do our assignments and do proper quality of production. Then the two previous movies that I did, the recent one, the Watibera, that's a designer, and also the lens. We also make an arrangement. They send them to Netflix. We sent them to Netflix mm -hmm. and they on the scrutiny. By God's grace, we hope for the best. The radio broadcast of the Make Sierra Leone Famous podcast on Radio Democracy 98.1 is made possible with a generous grant from the Asma James Foundation. The Asma James Foundation empowers women and girls with mentorship, scholarship, and life skills training. To make Sierra Leone better for girls and girls in Sierra Leone better, visit the Asma James Foundation at asma, that's A-S-M-A-A, james.com. And now, let's go back to the show. Okay, that's fantastic. So um, on average, how many movies do you think come out of the industry every month or every year? When people release films, do they mm. register it somewhere so um, you guys in the industry are aware that a film has been made? Is there like a local film registry or archive um, where filmmakers can take their films so that at the end of the year, everybody knows, okay, so-and-so made a film. Here are all the films that were made in Sierra Leone last year. How do you know when new films come out? How do you guys keep track? Okay, for now, we don't keep track for, for any film coming out. And I believe that in the next one year, we will have something like that because they are working on the, the film policy because all those things involve, you have, we're going to have a film censor that we scrutinize movies before coming out. So they are working on all those things in the film policy that the film council on um, their tools working on it right now. So for now, we're just doing it. Everybody can have a movie and release it, and that's it. Everybody can do it now. But no censors to censor the movie. So we don't keep track of those movies coming out for now. Okay, so what you guys are hoping to do right now is like to map yes. like who the players are in the film industry, who, who has a production and, company, who yes. the filmmakers are, like mapping the local film ecosystem so you can create yes. some kind of like guidelines of policy or something to yes. basically bring so that's, everybody that's, together and guide the work. Yes, that's one of the reasons for the policy. Okay, okay. And is there a Sierra Leone Film Association or Filmmakers Association? Like, is there a governing body? Yes, there is a governing body that is called the Film Council. And in the Film Council, we have different guilds. We have the actors' guilds, we have the directors' guilds, we have the producers' guilds. So, basically, I think it's less than two years back we started forming those guilds because Everybody is tired. You'll be doing things that have no control for the industry. People can just do mm -hmm. what they like and just do. So we decided to come together and let's have this policy. And this policy will guide all the filmmakers. So you will not go out of this policy. And these policies will also help us in the distribution aspect and to scrutinize the movies that are coming out. So we have the film council for now. Okay, that's um of the films you've made so far, 
which one film that you've worked in that you feel like this is my masterpiece. This is the film that I've made that represents like everything that I know, my expertise. This is like the one film that I put all my sauce in. What is that film and what makes it so special to you? Okay. One thing that I always do is I, my next film is my best film. So that's what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> well, for now, based on, based on the technicalities, based on the production wise, because one thing I have learned is production value. I've seen lots of movies, even in Netflix. The difference between those films and our films is production value. And production value is something I've studied throughout this month. And our next movie, we're going to embark robustly on production value. And there are a lot, lot of movies we have done that we've put in our effort. But our next movies, me and my team, is going to be our best movie. Okay. Okay. I see what you mean. It's that like because the quality and standard of films from Africa is yes. changing so quickly. Yes. You know, it's not like Nollywood of yesterday, right? Like the level of film production has grown so far that if it doesn't matter how good your story is, if it doesn't match that film quality, right? It basically, people, the expectations don't change so, almost. The viewers so, also. Yeah. Yes, because when someone when, when someone sees a movie, the first thing we concentrate on the picture. Is this picture okay? Is this picture clean? That's the first thing. Is this picture strong? Is this picture good? And secondly, the sound. Those are the things that captivate people. Okay, let me sit and watch the story. So those are the first mm -hmm. things you need to put in place. The picture, the sound. Then someone can sit and say, let me follow up the story. Right. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to talk about, you know that, like, for example, I just mentioned Nollywood. Nollywood was a great um, kind of showcase of and celebration, both of Nigerian culture and life, right? Like, they really exported everything Nigerian, including music, actually, because they use a lot of Nigerian movies and the soundtracks. Um, they just really exported Nigerian culture and arts through their films. Are you guys being intentional with the film? Well, you, are you being intentional in the same way with the films that you're making, with making sure you're embedding like Sierra Leonean um, art and culture and like life and values into your films? Is important okay. for you. That's so much important for me. Okay, firstly, we get to know about the strength of the American military, how do we get to know that? Through the movies we watch, the American movies we watch. We get to know the culture of American system. How? Through the movies we watch, the two the American movies. And we get to understand about the Nigeria culture through the Nigeria movie we watch. Some of us have never been in Nigeria, have never been in America. But we understand those culture. How do we understand those culture? It's because of the movie they are putting outside. Now, one of the things that me and my team always say is this. The image about Sierra Leone outside, most people can say it's the blood diamond, Ebola, and most of the negative things. Now, it's our responsibility as a filmmaker. One of the ways that people can understand that Sierra Leone is more than this. Sierra Leone is religious. Sierra Leone is a beautiful country. How? Through the movies that we're putting outside. So... In terms of culture, in, in terms of tourism, movie, I can say it uh, plays important role in those areas because those are the things people see and say, wow, where is this place? Okay, is this place in Sierra Leone? Okay, this place is nice. This place is nice. So I believe that movie plays a very important role in exposing our culture to the world and exposing the identity of a country to the world. That's how most people get to understand. I always say that what people see and hear have great tendency to influence someone's character or influence someone's belief about a particular thing. There may be books, mm -hmm. there may be music, people will listen, but what they see, because movie is something that moves someone, movie is something that makes someone understand exactly what's happening. So mm -hmm. movie plays a great role in exposing the identity and culture of a country. That's what I believe. And those people, the people that can put it outside is Sierra Leone because we understand exactly what's happening in the country. We understand our culture. We understand our identity. So if someone comes in and says, let me do this, and most of the movies, like you've seen outside, are talking about Sierra Leone. 
you at the end of the day will not be so much happy about it because certain things are not true. Those are not the actual things that are happening in Sierra Leone. For instance, this beast of the nation or blood diamond, the people, the way they're talking, the Creole, during the speaking, you understand that's not the Creole, that's not Sierra Leone for you, that's not Creole. So mm -hmm. we the mm -hmm. people, Sierra Leoneans are the best people to tell a Sierra Leonean story. Sierra are the mm -hmm. best people to preach, to expose our culture to the world. Let's tell the world that Sierra Leone is more than those things that you have been hearing. So that is the responsibility and one of the greatest impacts of the movie. Just sure. Like, How are you doing it? We will be right back after this short music break. The baby where them woke me at Where don't make me feel let like I'm not man enough I no get nothing for offer So only party will look down on me Where don't make me feel let like My life no good becomes something And they walked away All the people will promise for help me They say come office today Tomorrow next tomorrow The story not just the same but I refuse to give up. I kept on hoping. I kept believing. Now everything don't change. Me put a life down. That was famous with Bright to Future. And now let's head back to the Make Sailing Famous podcast. Tell me ways in which you are doing that in your own films. <laughs> okay, firstly, the landscapes of Sierra Leone. If you watch any of my movies, I will always start with the beautiful landscape where the credits are rolling, the beautiful beaches, okay. the, the beautiful landscape okay. of the country. So by that, I'm exposing people that we have those places. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. enjoy true tourism. So there are a lot of things we're putting into the movie that people understand. Okay, this is how Sierra Leoneans are. So we tell people mm -hmm. that this is... Uh, what about the culture? Sierra. What's one movie you've made where you felt like it was really full of cultural celebration of Sierra Leone. Okay, I'm not into much of uh, traditional movies, but I've been on mm -hmm. set one or two movies because. Ah, but do you have you to do to... a traditional movie for you to have culture no, in it? What... Is that the only way? Because, <laughs> no, no, traditional movie in the sense, not the village movies like a typical. Well, if you want to tell the culture, you need to do a typical traditional movies. And one of the things do that you really, is do you unique... really think so? You think that. The only way to have culture in your film is to have a movie set in the village? No, I'm not talking about the village. I said you need okay. to do a traditional movie, a traditional setting. You can do a traditional setting about the crews in Freetown. Like uh, go to region to do a typical setting about the crews. So it's not only about in the village. One of the things that's limiting us is the research. Firstly, I don't do right. about okay. cultural traditional thing, movies if I don't have enough information about those particular things that I want to portray. Mm -hmm. For instance, mm -hmm. most people are doing a Sierra Leone culture mm -hmm. movie. And if you watch it, you will try to understand that this is not the actual culture because we have watched those Nigerian movies so much that their cultures are always in our minds. Even if we're writing, we try mm -hmm. to imitate, we try to put things that are happening. So I go for research, I do research and get more information before doing a particular traditional or cultural movie that we expose to really. You see, so now, I guess maybe my thing is that, um, like, I understand the kind of movies you're talking about, the ones that are like village setting, all man, you know, then get Jigena de An or Kaui Shell nah. or then Tai La Paso. No, but I'm talking about food is culture, right? If you're in a movie and people are eating pizza in Freetown and not Plasas, that's a cultural decision, right? What people wear in the film, the costume, even if you're making a movie about a city movie, right? You could still have culture in the wardrobe decisions because people can be dressed in a way where the textiles that are identifiably um, Sierra Leonean. So like little things like that, I guess is what I'm talking okay, about. I understand, I understand exactly what you're saying. Like we also come with them in costume wise, right? Where we have mm -hmm. the prints, we have the African dress. I will also use, and also you're talking about the food. We have the lafidis and most of local food, especially it depends on the type of setting we're using. Yeah, no, there are definitely lots of different ways to be film honest. It, but, this is you know, one of the things the, the movie industry is lacking because 
most of our thoughts is full with those movies that we've been watching in Nigeria, the American movies. So I was shooting a scene when we use cassava leaf and when the people are eating, we use cassava leaf as the, as the mm-hmm. props. And someone asked, mm-hmm. why are we using cassava leaf? Why is this? So people are addicted to those cult- another person's culture, like, let's do this, let's do this. Why are we using this? Why are we using this? So one of the things that's affecting us as a filmmaker is that we are not promoting our culture to that extent. I understand what you're saying. And mm-hmm. me also, I'm a victim of that. So in promoting culture and all the rest, so that's one of the things that's affecting us. We will be right back after this short message from our brand partner, The Dollhouse Boutique. The Make Sierra Leone Famous podcast is supported by The Dollhouse Boutique, an American household brand for one of a kind fashion and bespoke creations. Find your next stylish look at shopdollhouseboutique.com. We have stores in Baltimore, Maryland and Los Angeles, California, showing the best of local designers. Our first international fashion boutique opens in Sierra Leone in 2022. Until then, find us on Instagram at dollhousemtvernon. That's dollhousemtvernon. And now... Make we go back to the show. As no, I mean, how else are we going but, to? I mean, if you think about it, if we're going to make Sierra Leone famous, right? If we're going to make Sierra Leone famous in film, um, the way that we do that is by having enough Sierra Leonean like things that identify Sierra Leone, right? Within the film. So when people watch them, um, you're like, oh, okay, this is what a Sierra Leonean film looks like. This is what Sierra Leone culture is. I mean, like when you think of traditional Indian movies, the women, you know, there's a whole way the women dress, the men dress, the singing, the dancing, the language that automatically you see it. You you see Bollywood, right? And so I guess I'm just yes. thinking out loud that as we try to make yes. Sierra Leone famous in film, being um, authentic could also help. But I don't want to drag this conversation well, with culture. We, we, Moving we right along. Okay. Regionally across the country, are there like different styles of films or filmmaking? Um, like, you know, is there like a way that Freetown producers work? Are people in McKinney making films? How are their films different? Are people in Bow making films? It, are there like regional films basically being made across the country or is everything clustered in Freetown? No, no. We have different type of union in those provinces. Like for in McKinney, but most people in those provinces they always do traditional movies because they have access more to those, the bushes and all that. So most of their movies are traditional. And most of us in the Western area in Freetown, like we're going more for city movies as in, it's not that we deviating from them. If we have village movies, we have to village, we'll go to the village and do it. If we have city movies, come to the city and do it. I believe that the facilities for them in the props in the provinces are limited. So, going for the things they can do what they can afford what they what's have. available what's available of yes. course of course that makes yes. that makes lots of sense um yeah. who are besides yourself of course who are some of like the emerging um filmmakers in sierra leone that are making really exciting projects that you feel like okay i really like this person's work they're really you know doing something really important <laughs> in the industry Okay, let me start with the producers because those are the mm-hmm. people that are working very hard. Like Lima, Lima Khan from Lima's Diary. She's doing mm-hmm. extremely well. She's very hardworking. She's one of the ladies that I respect so much. We have Phoebe Swill. Phoebe Swill also mm-hmm. just came into producing recently. And she's the one that produced the Watibera with uh, Auntie Zaina Bara Bangura. And she's so mm-hmm. hardworking. She's doing very well and she's very professional. We have Wistina Taylor. Mm-hmm. And we also have Jane Up there. Jane Up and Wisna Taylor are in America, but they often come down to shoot a movie and go back. So those okay. are the people that are doing very well. I also have Sia. And most of them are ladies. And the ladies are doing I just, I know, because well. I'm listening. Are they listening? They're like, oh, my name, that woman. That sounds they are doing fantastic. Ex- these are the producers. They, they can go extra mile. And they mm-hmm. want to break boundaries. They want to break the limits. They always want to push and do quality things. These are the producers. And for the directors, we have people that are doing very well. 
like the mm-hmm. Augusto Somojo, Jemef. Jemef is a, is a Ghanaian, but he got married in Sierra Leone and okay. he's currently So it, it belongs Leone. to we now. <laughs> yes. And we also have Chooks. Chook is also a Nigerian, but based in Sierra Leone. So okay. those people are doing Okay, so well. on the production, on the uh, basically on the producer side, it's primarily women. On the director side, it's mostly men. So it's yes. like a really good good balance interesting yeah. okay so um if someone wanted to make a film in sierra leone tomorrow right like if i have my script already and i wanted to make a film tomorrow where should i go like what resources are available to me where do you go together to like find a crew to make it all happen okay so presently you do a research by okay. the movie that are out. Okay, when you watch the movie, most likely get in contact by that. People ask, what are the movies that have been done in this country? People okay, could buy and the, then... the, the, and watch it and say, okay, let me work with this mm-hmm. person. So based on the work mm-hmm. done, that's how most people find a production team, find the crew. Okay. And how much, on? I know budgets for films vary, but on average, how much do people spend to make films in Sierra Leone? Like, you know, what are some of like the size of the budgets? It depends on the particular project you want to embark on. It depends on the mm-hmm. setting of the story because certain certain high budget, certain is low. For example, if you're doing a slum movie, you know that that's a slum. You don't have to pay for, for locations, for the house, you just okay, have to okay. people in the slum. So Mm -hmm. it's very Like what you hear? Don't forget to leave us a review. Your reviews make it easier for others to find this podcast. Don't forget to share it with your friends and family. Okay. So, but what's what's the range? Varies from what range to what range? Like, are okay, we talking, also, you know, also, 30 million, okay, 40 million, 50 from, million, okay, 100 personally, million? Personally, uh-huh. personally for me, I, I, I can work with a budget like from 50 million, not, not below 50 okay. million. Why? Because the camera, we're using the black, and the black magic, and they're getting black magic 700,000 per day. So right, imagine okay. if you have 10 days shooting, and using the yeah, black magic besides it so it's a lot so basically it's 50 million and above okay so no no less than 50 million to make a film no and, and how long do you how long do production take like one week to, i mean just the shooting one week two week three weeks a month okay if you shoot in everything in the city you're gonna have like 12 to 15 days shoots okay production, in the time. City. production that's days. because okay. that's because most of the cast live different areas. So by the time this is coming to set, we don't have mm-hmm. that facility to, to camp all the cars as one. Everybody in one place to like them. shoot. Yes. The, yeah, so of course. By of the course. time this is leaving, the, for some people are in the east. So by the time they are coming, all the time, 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 the time. Already, Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, what do you think um, by way of like resources? Because from what I hear, it's that like there's a lot of activity going on and a lot of people are trying really, really hard to make films. But um, everybody like people are working as individuals, right? Like individually getting your resources and doing everything on your own. What kind of resources do you think that the industry needs right now that are like really important to give you guys the kind of support you need? Okay. Firstly, we need people that can invest in the industry, that can mm-hmm. pour in money. That's the first resource we need. We need people that can mm-hmm. pour in because movie is money. You can't do a movie without mm-hmm. money. So we need money. That's one of the resources. And secondly, we need people that can help in locations. So like if you, you can imagine a particular job, but you don't have the exact location for that particular app. So we need people to come on board and help in terms of location, in terms of costume, like boutique. So mm-hmm. those are the things that mm-hmm. we need to come to get a beautiful project. Okay, so you basically need the you need the financial investment. You need support with yes. getting locations, and then also just location, wardrobe, costume, um, support yes. from like local businesses. That makes sense. Yes. Um, so before you wrap out the conversation, I just feel like, how do you feel about the future of the industry? Like when you look in three to five years, 10 years down the line, what is your vision for where, where this industry should go? Okay. Most of 
us have the mentality now that we're not only doing movies for just a unions. We do a movie for the world. We want to tell the world a union story. And how are we going to do it? Firstly, by, by empowering ourselves, by doing a great work. So most of us have that mindset and we're working towards it. So I believe in the next five years, Sierra Leone movie will be in different platforms, Netflix, Amazon, and in different festivals, because we're working very hard for us to put Sierra Leone movies to that point. So in the next three, five, ten years, we'll have internationally recognized actors, internationally recognized movies, and lots more. Okay. Well, now we've come to my favorite part of the Make Sierra Leone Famous show. The section is called On the Six. And what it is, is a fast fire section of the show where I ask you six questions and you have six seconds to answer. So I'm going to just say it and you have to say the first thing that comes to your mind when I ask you. Okay. So this is On the Six with Lansana, a.k.a. Spata. Sierra Leonean director and writer. And we are going starting now. First question. What is your favorite Sierra Leonean parable or expression? Gangai Spiki, I make a mama big neighbor. That's Gangai Spiki, make a mama big neighbor. Mama big neighbor. Okay, it's Gangai Spiki, make a mama big neighbor. Okay, all right. Yes. Next question. Okay, in two sentences. Tell me the plot of the last movie you watched. Okay, a virgin girl that was this that was raped, and at the end of the day, she revenged. Okay, and what was the name of this movie? I can't recall, but I know that I watched the movie. Like <laughs> that that. The plot is okay, all right, <laughs> yes. all right, okay. What song are you playing on repeat right now? What song are you listening to over and over again? Brighter Future. I've been listening to it since. My famous. famous. I love that song. Yes. I love that song. That's so um, okay. It really is. It really is. I love it. One of my favorites. Okay. What is one thing that you've been meaning to do that you still haven't done? Get married. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, next question. Um, when you feel like quitting, when you feel like giving up, what keeps you going? I understand I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it for my family and the nation as a whole. And last but certainly not least, who is one Sierra Leonean, dead or alive, that inspires you the most? Lima Khan. She's a producer in Lima's Diary. Okay, fantastic. Okay, well, that's all the time we have for here today on the Make Sierra Leone Famous podcast with Sierra Leonean filmmaker, writer, Lansana Spata Kamara. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to put links to his latest films um, on the show notes so you can check them out um, and watch movies from Sierra Leone. That's all we have for today. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for listening to the Make Sailing Famous Podcast. Until next time, ta-ta!